And now I yield five minutes to my friend from San Diego, California, Mr. Peters. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your testimony today, uh, Director Swagel. The CBO has provided Congress with objective nonpartisan analysis to support evidence-based decision-making for 50 years now. We depend heavily on you and your office to provide us with a common set of facts that we can use to, to uh, debate and make decisions. Um, you don't just crunch numbers and make budget projections, though. You, you're transparent about how you conduct your analysis and economic modeling. This is your second time testifying before the committee this year. When your staff and advisory panels don't have enough information to inform your analysis, it's our experience that you come to us and ask which experts you should speak with. And as you testified um, earlier today, you and your team handle remarkable workload. Um, thousands of requests for uh, congressional requests for technical assistance, hundreds of cost estimates, dozens of reports and other publications each year. And last time you testified here, you told the committee that you needed about 285 employees to fully serve Congress, and at that point you had just under 270. Can you remind me how large uh, CBO is relative to the Government Accountability Office or the Congressional Research Service? And if we increase, increase your statutory requirements under law, uh, do we also need to increase your resources? Yeah, so we were about half the size of CRS, and then GAO is about 10 times our size. Right. And if we increase the statutory requirements under law, like you're obviously gonna need more resources. We need, we need to there. expand. And in some areas, like healthcare, we're just always, you are always understaffed. And so, Thanks, um, and I, I understand the, the concerns and critiques of my colleagues on the committee, but I think we have to um, also give, make sure that we're giving you the tools um, that, we, that you need for us to, to get the product that we want. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other problems we face um, in Congress when we make investments in infrastructure, healthcare, national defense, we only evaluate the impact of that spending generally in today's money. We don't account for the benefit of future savings from those investments. No family in America would think to say, we can save $5,000 by not fixing the roof this year <laughs> uh, without uh, knowing that this next storm will mean really big damage to your furniture and outlays that could be well exceed, exceed that. But that's how we do it here. That's what we do. Um, earlier this year, the committee and the House voted to pass the Preventative, savings, Preventative Health Savings Act. That directs CBO to estimate and provide the long term, that's a 30-year budgetary effects of preventative health care services at the request of this committee's leaders. And while Senate action on Dr. Burgess's bill would be a good start, the long-term budgetary effects still can't be used for budget enforcement. Mr. Director, you and I have previously discussed the feasibility of adjusting long-term budgetary effects for uncertainty and making them enforceable when there's sufficient data. In addition to a directive from Congress, what analytical tools or technical capabilities does your agency need to, to conduct more long-term analyses and provide statistically valid uncertainty adjustments? No, thank you, and it, it's something that we're pushing hard on. Um, maybe, I'll, if it's okay, I'm gonna start with a, a specific example and then talk briefly about the, the general point. We're working to analyze a proposal uh, related to um, treatment of hepatitis C. Yep. So you, you know, it's intravenous drug users get, get infected with the virus. 20 years later, about 80% of them have very serious liver uh, problems. 20% of them, basically, they clear the virus on their own. And that happens 20 years down the road. Right. So the 10-year window is just mismatched. Right. You know? And so we're working to evaluate that. We're we, of course, we're going to provide the 10-year information. At the same time, we're working to provide 30-year information because the savings will increase. You, know, you spend money up front. You save money in the averted cost down the, few, down the road. We're going to provide both. And then it's up to the Congress, to the, you know, to the Budget Committee first, but the Congress more generally, how to use that. And then just the capabilities. Um, it's combining our health people, our macro people, our labor people. What does it mean for the labor market? What does it mean for the overall economy? Um, and so those are the kinds of capabilities I would look to, uh, to add. Right. I think, you know, uh, the chairman and I and, and other members have been engaged in an effort to try to figure out how do we corral this national debt and get our, our, um, our country on a sustainable path. Um, I, w I think we want to do it in a realistic way. The, the other thing we've talked about is um, diagnostics, new diagnostics like whole genome sequencing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the benefits uh, down the line of knowing that information from maybe a baby? And um, obviously the, the, the data is going to be hard to aggregate, but if we're going to be realistic about what, a, what the true cost is of something, mm -hmm. we have to understand kind of what the benefit is down the line. I appreciate your effort on that. And, uh, continue to work on it and hope that you'll be upfront about the resources you need to help us be successful. 
Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentleman from California.